Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're moving on to what we refer to as geometric progressions, or better known as GPs. Um, so far we've looked at the three S's, so we looked at having a set, um, we looked at what a sequence was, so sequence was a basically an ordered set, and then of course we had the series, which was the sum of the sequences, okay? Um, once again, we're going to be looking at sequences, but this time we're going to be looking at slightly different, we're not going to be looking at arithmetic, we're going to be looking at geometric. Um, just as a, I guess, a quick review, we looked at an arithmetic the other day, I think it was something like 5, 7, and 9, okay? Um, and it was arithmetic because it went up by a common difference, okay? And this common difference, for example, um, in that question like we had the other day, was plus 2. All right, so that's where we brought into the rule TN equals A brackets, uh, sorry, A plus um, N minus 1 times D times that common difference. But what if we have a different progression? What if we have something like, uh, let's say we got 4, then 8, and then 16. So if we try to find that common difference, we'd say, well, the first part we've got here is um, plus 4, right? And then the second one, we've got, oh, we've now got plus 8. And so that starts to get a little bit more trickier. I'm going to break this down just a little bit more. I guess if we spoke about our um, last lesson when we looked at the arithmetic, we spoke about the patterns, right? The first type of sequence is a pattern. And I guess that's what we've got there, right? We've got a pattern. Um, and I guess if we talk more of an, uh, an algebraic uh, or a general formula, the first term is still going to be A, okay? Um, the second term in this case, though, we're doing A times 2. The third term, we're saying A times 2, but we're timesing it by 2. Okay, if we took the fourth one, A times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, I'm just going to whack above those a little T1, a T2, a T3 and T4. So again, that's a bit more of a generalized sort of approach. Once we did that last time, we then looked at the formula approach because of course, if we want to find the 50th term, um, it's going to be a lot of times twos that we're going to have to do there and that's going to get quite time consuming. So let's come up with a nice little formula. Well, we've got TN equals our A. Okay, that's what we start with. That's what we did last time. But in this case, we're then timesing it by, now what we've actually got is these times twos. That's times two, that's times two squared, times two cubed. And what we refer to this as, let's call it R, where R, instead of being a common difference, we call this a common ratio, okay? Because we're doubling it, it's a ratio. You might be halving it, okay? Um, and I'm gonna say, A to the times r the power of n. Now it's not quite true to times the power of n, is it? Because let's say for the third term, we've only got to the power of 2. To the fourth term, we've got to the power of 3. So hopefully you can work out that should be to the power of, of n take away 1. And I guess that's our formula approach, all right? And that will get out any of these sort of responses. Look, we know from this one, the next one's going to be 32, because we're doubling it. We can test it, of course, with this little thing, and say T, um, let's call that the fourth term, equals A, which was 4, times 2 to the power of 4, take away 1, which is 3. So 2 cubed is 8, 8 for the 32. Look at that, it works perfectly. So it's a really nice little rule that we use for a geometric progression. The third one, of course, is that whole idea of the recursion, all right? Um, now, just like we did for the last one, if we know what the first term is going to be, uh, if we want to work backwards, so let's say, for example, we have 32, okay? So we want to find 32, and we know that we had the first term of 16. Well, we do, we have the 16, which is the term n take away 1, because that's our fourth term, that's our third term, and then we're timesing that by 2, which means we're timesing it by the ratio. Um, and so that works out quite nicely, but again, what I've mentioned that we don't really need the recursion for anything uh, particularly useful, except for when we do what? Hopefully you might remember I said we use this for testing or for trying to prove, okay? So we've got a proof there, which means that 
if I need to show or prove there's a common ratio, all right, and that's equal to my Tn, well, R is equal to Tn divided by Tn minus 1. All right, that can find me that common ratio. So I guess what we did last time is what we would have to do. We can't just show one because we need to show that the that there is a common ratio, not just a ratio. So we would show something like this. Um, T3 minus one. Um, apologies, T3 divided by T2, okay, so T3 divided by T2, we want to show that that's equal to T2 divided by T1. Um, if I look at this particular one that we, we've done up here, that's what I'm showing is that 16 divided by 8 is the same as 8 divided by 4, which we know to be 2, therefore there is a common difference, or sorry, a common ratio, alright, so we can apply the stuff in the arithmetic progression to a geometric progression. In layman's terms, I guess, what is it that we actually, like, we really need to know? Well, hopefully, um, what you can see there, the things that we really need to know are going to be the formula and the proof. Okay, that's the two things that we really need to get a grip of here. Okay. So what we might do, we might look at an example um, to see how this might work. So, find the first three terms and the tenth term of a GP with A equals three and R equals two. Look, this is a pretty straightforward question. You could probably do this yourself, so by all means, go and have a crack at it. Um, but we know that A equals three. So that first term is three. Now we know the common difference is, or well, the common ratio, so is, uh, is two, which means I'm multiplying it by two, which is just gonna be three times two is six, 6 times 2 is 12, I've found my common ratio, okay? If I want to find the tenth term, well, I use this Tn equals A times R, the power of N take away 1, which for T10, we've got 3 times 2 to the power of 9, okay? Because 10 take away 1 is 9, and then I simply, I'm going to plot all of that in, and I end up getting something like um, 1536, I think it is. Okay, now to be honest with you as well, doesn't really matter which form. I mean, you're gonna get some really big numbers. Um, if it's easily calculatable, um, then certainly you can write it as uh, a nice uh, integer. Otherwise, you can leave it in this kind of form. Uh, remembering too, that when we're finding um, the N, or we're looking at the N, okay, N must be, okay, a positive integer. You can't have um, that 1.7th term. doesn't work. You need to have the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So just remember that little fact that is important to think about as well. And of course, um, they're all real numbers. Alrighty, so we're not having a third or anything like that at all. It's a real number. Um, it's fine. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you the next question because we did this with our arithmetic progression, our AP. And I want to just show this question because it's going to be a bit of an issue, all right? That's why I put a bit of an asterisk, um, okay? Because part of this just isn't going to be possible. It says show that 15025 is a GP and hence find the first negative terms. Well, to be honest, looking at that, that does look like a GP, right? Um, if I look at that little term to find if it's a GP, remember, um, for a GP, we want to test that T3 divided by T2 is equal to 2T divided by T1. So T3 divided by um, T2 um, equals a half. And then 50 divided by 100 is equal to a half. Therefore, um, T3 over T2 is equal to T2 over T1. Therefore, is a GP. All right, so the first part, beautiful, okay? So again, you can see the reason why we need to know that recursion kind of formula um, or idea or concept so that we can prove that this is a GP. Remember, if we're not told that this is a GP, we actually can't go and use the, um, use the rule to find the number of terms. The next part though, because we've proved it's a GP, so that's sorted, we now want to find out what that nth term is going to be. 
remembering that this is what we're going to have as our formula. Okay. So it says, hence find the first negative term. So I want you to think about this before using the formula. Think about this in reality, okay? Or think about this as the pattern. 100, 50, 25, 12 and a half. What's going to happen each time that we half this number? Is it ever going to get positive? And the answer is no, okay? No matter what we do with these numbers, if we halve the number, there is no possible way that that can be a negative answer. Okay, um, we do know that it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to zero, but it will never go below zero. So you've got a question where we can't actually do. So there is a, a pretty um, important difference, I guess, from what we were doing in the uh, arithmetic progression as opposed from um, the geometric. Um, it's, it's also probably important to note um, I'm just trying to get another page up here. Um, if we take a arithmetic, let's say we got our a little AP going on here, right? And let's say we start with a number like uh, five, and then we take two off three, and then one, etc. Um, so we start off with a positive number, okay? But my difference is negative, and what you can see that it's always going to be uh, indefinitely. Okay, indefinitely, I can't even spell that. Um, indefinitely going to be a, a negative answer. Okay, so because remember, it's infinite, it keeps on going on. Um, if I start with a negative number, let's say negative three, and I have a difference, which is a negative. Okay, so negative three, negative five, negative seven, then it's always going to be negative. So theoretically, if the difference is negative, well, guess what's going to happen? It's always going to be negative, okay? It might start off as positive, possibly, but it's going to always be um, infinitely negative. If I take a, a positive and I have a positive difference, you know, for so 3, 5, 7, then obviously it's always going to be positive as well. Um, if I take a negative but a positive um, a difference, so like negative 2, 0, 2, 4, again, it's always going to be positive. So our difference is really important about it being negative or positive because we can see what the majority of the numbers are going to be. The issue is going to be, however, is if I then start looking at this as a GP. Let's say, for example, for a GP, we have a number like 8. Okay, so it's positive. And we have a positive ratio. So we're going to times it by 2. So we have 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. Okay, it's always going positive. Beautiful. If I take a negative number, like negative uh, 8, and then we have a negative ratio, sorry, a positive ratio, then let's say we're times it by 2 again. We've got negative 16, negative 32, negative 64. Then it's always going to be negative. So this time, a positive ratio, okay, um, won't necessarily end you up with a majority of positive numbers. Um, but this is where the clincher gets, right? What if I have a negative ratio? Let's say I have 8. So I've got a positive A, and then I have a negative ratio like times negative 2. We have 8, we have negative 16, we have positive 32, we have negative 64, we have positive 128. Look what's happening. It's going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, it switches in and out. And it doesn't matter if I start with a negative number. It's just going to happen the exact opposite way, but it's going to happen. All right, so that's quite important to note as you go through um, to recognize that these, these are possible. Okay, they are possible. And because of that, we're going to end up with some uh, interesting sort of concepts later on. All right. Um, so I checked there. Have a crack at this question. Now, this is a pretty good question because we can make this a GP and we can make this an AP. All right. I want you to have a think about how you could do this and have a go at it. All right. Welcome back. Now, I'm going to throw this as an AP to start with because we've got AP first. All right. So for an AP, if I'm proving that this is an AP, right, this is what I have to do. I had to show that T3 take away T2 was equal to T2 take away T1, i.e., 
I'm looking for a common difference. Do you agree? So that means in this question, I'm saying that x plus 10 take away x plus 4, put that in brackets, is equal to 2, x plus 4 take away 3. Um, that means x plus 10 take away x take away 4 is equal to x plus 4 take away 3. Um, x take away x disappears. I'm left with 10 take away 4 which is 6. Uh, x, 4 take away 3 is 1. Therefore take the 1 away, x equals 5. Beautiful. So my solution is going to be, and I like to put it in, just double check, 3, 9, and then we get 15. So we can see it's adding, uh, what, what, 6 each time. Done. Perfect GP. We found a value for x. But this could also be a GP. All right. So let's throw in the GP now and see what happens when we have a G, possible GP. So now for the possible GP, we're going to say that T3 divided by T2 is equal to T2 divided by T1. Um, so we're dealing with ratios. So we're dealing with X plus 10 over X plus 4 is equal to X plus 4 over 3. I'm then going to cross multiply to get 3X plus 30 equals, what's that going to be, x squared plus 8x plus 16. So I'm going off the page there. Um, if I simplify this, we get 3x squared. Um, we're going to take the x squared across here. Actually, we'll leave the x squared there, sorry. So I've got x squared. I'm going to take the 3x across, which makes 5x. I'm going to take the 30 across which is going to be 16 take away 30, what's that? Um, negative 14, okay? If I factorize this, we get x plus seven, x take away two, therefore x equals negative seven, x equals positive two. We now come up with two possible answers. One's negative, one's positive. We sub them back in just to double check to see what's going to happen. I'll put it up here. So I'll do one and two. So they both start with 3. Um, the top one with negative 7. So we've got negative 7 plus 4. Well, that's negative 3. Then we've got negative 7 plus 10. Well, that's 3. Okay. We've got 3, negative 3, 3. Yeah, that works out. If I use the uh, next one, which we said x could equal 2. So 2 plus 4 is 6. Um, 2 plus 10 is 12. We get 3, 6, 12. It works, right? We're doubling. So here we have a common ratio of negative 1. Here we have a common ratio of 2. It works both times. You can see there's a big scope for lots of different questions with geometric progressions. And I guess what you have to think about is the same two facts that we did with our arithmetic ones. Okay, um, And that's where, first of all, we need to learn the rule. T1 equals AR to the N minus 1. We then need to um, think about how that works in terms of our proof. So Tn equals R3 divided by R2, uh, which is going to equal R2 divided by R1. And that's going to be able to prove whether or not it's going to be a, a geometric progression. And then if it is a, pre a geometric progression, we can go in through that uh, method to find the actual terms. Um, look, I hope that wasn't too confusing. We've had a, a pretty decent introduction now to arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions. You must know the difference between the, the, uh, each of them, okay? And we're just looking here only at the sequences, all right? Our next lessons, we're going to be moving on and we're going to start looking at this series and start adding these fellas up together. Have an awesome day, guys. Um, don't stress too much. If you're working in my class, uh, this should pretty much start bringing you into, um, I believe it's like exercise 7.6 or thereabouts. So make sure you crack through that work. Um, any questions, drop me an email. Otherwise, have an awesome day.